Good morning and thank you for the invite. Well, environment is a bit the Cinderella this morning. Uh, I mean, often we look at the big numbers of energy, but then we forget that what we breathe, what we drink, what we eat comes from the, from the land, from the source, from the earth. And therefore, what we don't invest today in environment, we will pay back tomorrow, three times more. So um, we are in Ukraine physically since recently, but working with Ukraine since many, many years on many fronts. And we have an excellent relationship with the Minister of Environment, with the other line ministries on the topic of sustainable development. We have been requested by the, by the government of Ukraine to be in the country and make an assessment of the environmental damages of the war. All the energy infrastructures you have seen damaged today have also an environmental impact when they get bombed or shelled or destroyed. Not only the energy, but also the industrial site, the chemical sites. Just remember that 3% of the GDP of Ukraine was coming from the chemical sector. So every single chemical plant that gets bombed is an economic loss, but is an environmental disaster, potentially. And this is what we are there to assess and see. We have made the first review in October 2022 of the environmental damages of the war. Uh, this was mainly done through remote sensing satellites, obviously because it was difficult to assess certain sites. And all the chemical plants were in the east part of Ukraine, so where, where the, the invasion is still very, very, very present. We have therefore continued assessing the sites. We have an online database with all the sites that you can see which were damaged and are damaged uh, on a daily basis in Ukraine. This is updated on a daily basis through a network of partners that we are working with. And you can click on every spot and see what are the information, what are the potential damages, what are the, the risks associated with that thing. One for sure issue is the debris. It's a very old style war. I mean, there is a massive destruction ongoing. Uh, houses, buildings, schools, hospitals are really destroyed. And all the debris is potentially contaminated by asbestos. Ukraine was the largest user of asbestos in Europe. So all that material is potentially a threat to the rescuers, to the rebuilders, to the local population. This needs to be addressed now because otherwise in 20 years, there will be a boom of lung cancers in the country. I mean, it's something that you need to save today to, to save money in the future. These are uh, um, chemical sites that have been bombed. You may also remember the issue of, of the Azovstal uh, plants that uh, it was on all the newspapers uh, uh, last year. Well, the colors are not nice. I mean, that is chemical uh, residues. This is uh, uh, the tailing dams that are changing because they got exposed to natural factors. This is all pollution coming out. This is something that will stay and will go and will cost a lot of money and will require a lot of intelligence, a lot of technologies to clean it up and solve it. And of course, there are the protected areas. I mean, uh, yeah, this may not be at the top priority, but you know, in the end, we will need to have an environment that is conducive to a good lifestyle of the Ukrainian people. And so this is important to look at the protected areas uh, and you can see how they are disseminated in the territory and how they were damaged. The forests have been heavily uh, damaged by the, by the shellings. There are forest fires. Uh, we have assessed the damage of, by the forest sector. And those pictures I took myself when we were last week in, on, a, on a field trip, you will see that the trees are still green, but the roots are burned. So the, the, the tree will die in a few years. So the damage is not visible today, but will be visible in a few, in a few years, but it's still irreversible. We have a list of sites that are important for, for, uh, for recovery, for restoration, for uh, environmental safety. And we have an issue of programming coming for the, for the coming years. 
that uh, that is important to look at for for greener recovery of Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Marco Beros from uh, European Investment Bank to came on the stage. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Excellencies, Deputy Ministers. It's a pleasure for me to speak here about the water sector. Very briefly, I will not repeat what my colleague Alexander already mentioned about EIB in general. Uh, just a few slides. I guess the presentations will be shared yeah, with the participants. Yeah. So yeah, yes, I repeat. A, it will be shared and it's also possible to join the presentation with the QR code that is uh, in the panel at the beginning, at the entrance. Good, thank you. So we are, uh, we are one of the largest lenders to the water sector with about 2.4 billion euro per year overall in, in the world, of which a large percentage, of course, is in, in EU. And uh, EIB is lending to the whole water sector, to the whole water cycle, both public and private water, sanitation, flood protection, and so on. And we can mobilize technical assistance, which is a very key aspect for projects, especially outside Europe and especially in Ukraine. And we, my, as my colleague said, we normally finance only 50% of the project cost, but we have exceptions such as in war situations uh, like in Ukraine or other disaster situations where we can go up to 100%, which we will try for all the reconstruction projects in Ukraine. We have a water sector policy document, which was published last month at the United Nations Water Conference in New York. So I inv invite you to download it. I will not go into more deeper details. It's of course based on European water policy, especially the Water Framework Directive. Yeah, these are the lending data. You see it varies from one uh, on the one year to the other. We are EU's climate bank. So that means we have a very strong commitment to climate action at each project level. We need to demonstrate the climate action components, either for mitigation, that means greenhouse gas reduction, or for adaptation to climate change. So we have these strong commitments, which we will use everywhere in the world. We don't have different standards for developing countries or for EU member states. We use the same standard. That's a very important aspect. Water is very high on the agenda, of course, in both climate adaptation, mitigation, and environmental sustainability, for which we use the EU taxonomy, as you can imagine. Yeah, I will not go into detail. These are our policy documents you can download. I will just mention that we have been in active in Ukraine for uh, some time. I will not, uh, you have seen these slides already from my colleague Alexander. And I will go into the water sector. We, we have had four projects ongoing, which have, I've been following personally. And uh, unfortunately, the situation after the war has uh, changed dramatically. Uh, we had to cancel our project in Mariupol because of the war. Uh, luckily, the operation in Mykolaiv is still ongoing. We have works ongoing currently. We have technical assistance <laughs> ongoing. And uh, we are very glad that some companies are willing to work there despite all the difficulties. Uh, my name is Igor Knyazev, and I'm a principal banker of EBRD, responsible for development and implementation of various projects in the municipal sector of Ukraine, uh, which includes uh, water supply and sanitation. Uh, my colleague Olga has uh, described in EBRD involvement in Ukraine earlier. I just would like to emphasize that we invested 1.7 billion euro in Ukraine last year, and we plan to invest three more billion in 23-24. Sustainable infrastructure, including municipal infrastructure, accounts for 55% of our portfolio. And uh, we will continue to invest uh, in the infrastructure project. Uh, according to Ukraine Rapid uh, Damage and Needs Assessment mentioned several times today, uh, since the beginning of the war, Ukraine's water and wastewater companies have sustained direct damages as a result of both Russian shelling 
and frequent uh, power outages. The estimated aggregate physical damage for the water and wastewater sector stands at uh, 2.2 billion US dollars. The economic losses of the sector are even greater. They're estimated at approximately 7.5 billion. EBRD is working with both water and wastewater companies that suffered from physical damage and water utilities in other regions they need, uh, that need emergency capex, especially in the areas with high number of uh, internally displaced uh, people. Uh, Mykolaiv Vodakanal is a good example of a company with uh, si significant uh, damage. Uh, as Kherson was temporarily occupied by the Russian invaders, Mykolaiv has suffered from heavy shelling. As a result of this shelling, the water transmission pipeline and pump station were partially uh, damaged. This damage left Mykolaiv residents without a functional and reliable source of drinking water. To ensure availability of at least some water for the residents, Mykolaiv started supplying uh, brackish water. Such a radical measure uh, inevitably resulted in a quicker wear and tear of equipment and corrosion of pipes. So we decided to join forces of, with EAB here for this project. Uh, after the city approached us, and we're planning to uh, you know, finance the priority investment program, which includes uh, urgent water treatment and uh, purification improvements, reconstruction of water intake from Dnipro River, phase one of the rehabilitation of uh, the wastewater treatment plant, and rehabilitation of selected sections of water and wastewater networks. EBRD is planning to arrange loan and grant financing in the amount of up to 22 million. Investment grants are expected to come from the government of Denmark and uh, Eastern Europe Energy Efficiency and Environment a Partnership, also known as E5P Fund. Uh, the bank has ongoing wastewater biogas project uh, in the city of Lviv. Uh, which had started before the beginning of the war. Uh, the project entails the design and construction of a new biogas facility on the basis of two wastewater treatment plants owned and operated of, uh, by the municipal company. Uh, the project is uh, financed from a sub-sovereign loan of uh, EBRD, 15 million euros, 7.5 million grant from the E5P fund, a parallel loan from NEFCO and the city contribution. The design and build contract was signed with consortium Rico Kambi from Slovenia and Norway. Uh, the consortium already completed the development of the necessary design documents and ordered equipment while Viva the Canal prepared the construction sites and uh, continued repairing sedimentation tanks. Uh, the frequent power outages of uh, the inflow of internally displaced people, and Lviv is the main hub of IDPs in Western Ukraine, uh, as well as other factors emphasize the need for emergency wastewater treatment plant rehabilitation in Lviv. So uh, the priority of uh, program uh, for this new project is expected to include construction of new pretreatment grid chambers, installation of automatic influent overflow control, rehabilitation of existing primary and secondary sedimentation tanks, uh, sludge thickening tank, installation of uh, new wastewater aeration units. We're sorry, in the process Igor, of you, arranging you can, financing for this sorry, project. Yeah, I understand. Can go yeah. to the conclusion because Oh, uh, I'm sure that time. representatives of many companies present today are interested in participating in the EBRD finance projects. Uh, therefore, we have prepared several slides with links to the EBRD procurement procedures. Due to the limited amount of time, I will not be able to go through all of them, but uh, uh, the presentation should be available for your future reference. For now, let me just emphasize uh, a key message. Procurement for all projects in public sector is carried out in accordance with our procurement rules. 
for client led contracts, tendering and contracting is carried out via EBRD client e procurement portal or ESEP. We highly recommend uh, for, uh, to register there in order to monitor procurement uh, opportunities. And Italian companies are very welcome to participate in the tenders. Thank you very much. <laughs>